Well, Mardi Gras was different this year. This time of year in New Orleans, we expect marching bands, masquerade balls, parades of massive papier-mâché floats, and throngs of costumed revelers commandeering the streets. This time, we had almost none of that. But New Orleans is still New Orleans, and Mardi Gras will find a way. For the first time ever, on a grand scale, we had the advent of house floats. Since we couldn't crowd into the streets to watch the parades roll by, we turned Mardi Gras inside out. Our houses became the parade. Over 3,000 homes and businesses were transformed for the month of February. Some neighborhoods voted on themes, and many of the designs were done by out-of-work professional Mardi Gras artisans, but most were of a more homegrown nature. My parents, who live in Bywater neighborhood just about a mile away from me, asked if we could do our part in keeping Mardi Gras alive by helping them turn their house into a pirate ship. I'm not sure where the pirate theme came from, but I'm pretty sure my daughter had something to do with it. As with any serious project, we started out with some research. Ages three and up, I think we can handle this. My mom gave us a layout of her front porch on some graph paper and scaled a photocopy of this hyper-realistic 18th century sailing ship. The idea is to split this design to fit on either side of her steps and then build a semi-three-dimensional model out of Luan plywood. Since the ship is more than four feet tall, we'll need to use four vertical panels pieced together. In our drawing, one half inch equals one foot, so the plan was to just plot out whatever points we could on the plywood based on the model ship and then connect the dots. That's almost straight, but we'll put a slight curve in it. Okay. But I'd say that spot and that spot are a foot over, two feet over, and one foot down. Yeah. We didn't want the ship to look so much like a flat cutout, so we decided to give the front of the ship some curvature and make it wrap around the front of the porch slightly. We cut some ribs out of three quarter inch plywood for the inside of the ship, and the Luan pulled into shape easily with some small pan head screws. We made the upper trim pieces out of a second layer of Luan with some small standoffs. This also helped to tie the vertical panels together and make it a little bit more rigid. It doesn't exactly need to be seaworthy, but it does need to last for a couple of weeks out in the weather. Next, we started building the poop deck, which will be separated from the rest of the ship by the front steps. We decided that because this section is relatively short and flat, the stern of the ship also needed to wrap around the corner of the porch to avoid looking like a paper cutout. This section of the ship has a more complex geometry and it also doesn't fit easily within a single sheet of plywood, so we had to get a little creative with how we pieced it together.
This isn't the most ambitious Mardi Gras project we've taken on by a long shot. There's always been outlandish floats and carts and contraptions to build for our own revelry or for the other grassroots crews in our orbit. There's been countless collaborations that have led to the type of grand and strange creations that make this city unique. But somehow this felt important. After a year that saw so much loss and left us so hidden from each other, it would be unthinkable to celebrate a purely virtual Mardi Gras. We needed tangible artifacts of our celebration to prove that we're still here, even if we didn't see each other. If we are able to discard all of the habits and coping mechanisms that carried us through the last year, I hope that this is one thing that becomes a tradition. Thanks for watching, and I hope I see you next year.